Visually, shots fired in a video game often look pretty similar, especially in an FPS. But as far as the physics are concerned, how does a projectile hit a target? What exactly is the process in place that gives you the end result of a shooting game? Is it really a virtual projectile headed for a target at breakneck speed? Or is it something else? Hi folks, it's Falcon. And today, GameRanks wants to ask the question, how do projectiles work in video games? Everybody likes to be thrilled. Some people go skydiving, some people go mountain climbing, and a lot of people without a death wish play video games. What's great about video games is you can experience situations that you might not ever see or even desire to see in real life and get kind of a taste of what that type of situation might be like. Now I'm not saying all of them are accurate, they're obviously all built to be the most thrilling version of that as possible, and in reality people in the military for instance can sit around for months before anything happens. Nonetheless, what could be more thrilling than simulating a situation in which you're in near death at all times. I mean besides actually living it because I really don't want to be near death at all times. We've talked about it before but oftentimes video games are violent for more than one reason and in the case of a shooter it's at least partially about creating a sense of urgency. But in order to do all that there's a lot of systems in place to simulate things. A shooter game without bullets or some type of projectile simulation isn't a shooter game. So we're not gonna go back massively far, this isn't a history video, but back to the days of say Counter-Strike, the original Counter-Strike, and you know games like GoldenEye 007, stuff that's really fun but maybe a little primitive by today's standards. These games use geometry for all the objects, the characters, the power-ups, the walls, are all geometry. As such, math calculations can be used in order to determine if something was about to hit something. In these more primitive games, and a lot of new games where maybe the real realism isn't the highest priority, a process called a hit scan is used. Now, a hit scan is kind of the game dev version of the term ray casting, which is a mathematical slash rendering term that projects a line and typically could go on forever. But if the ray happens to hit something, and is obviously programmed to be able to hit something, it returns a value. That value is where the bullet would hit. What this actually behaves like is more of a laser. And since we don't really have laser guns, it's not completely realistic. That being said, having an animation that looks like you shot a bullet, and having the place where the bullet would hit act as a collision point, whether it be on a wall or on a character, pretty much looks correct. That's basically how first person shooters did this, especially during their rise in popularity. Now there are a couple of inherent limitations. For one, it's impossible to dodge a shot. If it's a correctly aimed shot and they pull the trigger, it's done. That's all. There's no time in between when they press the button and when you get hit. Similarly, weather conditions cannot affect this. This is essentially a digital switch, an on-off where it's either a hit or it's not a hit. There are no other factors in play, that's just that. You have to remember that first-person shooters, although they've always kind of been the bleeding edge of gaming were, just like all other forms of games, at one point much simpler. And even if you made a game today that used this type of method in order to do your bullets, if the game was good enough, this is obviously not something that really matters a whole lot. Does that mean it's a good place to just stop developing? No, absolutely not. Because in order to make other conditions important in a shooter, which to be frank, if you want to make a truly hardcore shooter you're going to have the goal of, you need to have a bullet that doesn't function as a digital object on-off switch, you need it to function as more of a fader. There needs to be a gray area where you might get out of getting hit by that bullet. Whether by some miracle some other random player gets in between you and the bullet between the time that it takes for the bullet to get from the gun to you, or there's a lot of wind, or the gun has been shot many times, and frankly it has less accuracy in its shots, more systems have to be in play than simply casting a ray to where the bullet would hit and figuring out what's there when that happens. To do that, games evolved to have an actual projectile. And by that I mean a system where an object actually exists, or at least virtually actually exists. This is all obviously not real. But there's geometry for the bullet, the bullet is behaving as an object object in the world and is affected by all the other systems of the game in the same way any other object would be. The previous method, ray casting, can also actually be in play as well, as sometimes the bullet itself projects a ray that returns a value for every single frame, which essentially for every frame would provide a new collision point. The other way it may calculate a collision point is through multi-sampling, or what you might know as interpolation in many other systems, or even if you use graphics programs. As your bullet moves from frame to frame, it essentially 
figures out where it's going to be in the next frame, and within the distance between the two frames, calculates whether or not there's going to be a collision. If there is a collision, obviously that's that. And if there's not, it just continues to calculate where it's going to be the next frame and keeps going until it's time to stop. But the bullet itself needs to be affected by other things than just where it's going to hit. Let's say there's a wind system in the game that could blow the projectile off its course, even if only slightly. Now, if that's the case, that brings up the realism level by quite a bit because it then creates a situation in which you need to compensate your aiming. This couldn't be done in a situation where ray casting was the exclusive method of calculating where the bullet was going. But in a system that constantly updates itself as to the situation as it progresses, even if it's over a split second, other calculations can be figured in, like wind. Or perhaps the level is an environment where the gravity is higher than it would be in a normal Earth situation. Or perhaps you're shooting in a magnetic field. Or perhaps your bullets aren't bullets at all, maybe they're some other thing, like paint. And don't even tell me that you could make Splatoon, for instance, where projectiles are actually a liquid. Nothing in Splatoon behaves in a manner that any bullet would ever. And that's why Splatoon wouldn't have been possible a couple decades ago, even though first-person shooters at that point had taken on quite a life of their own. Just being a first-person shooter at that point, being that three-dimensional, having that kind of competitive interaction that even worked at all was impressive. But now that you know where projectile processes came from and how far they've come, you probably can take a decent guess as to where they're going. A certain class of shooter is going to become a lot more realistic as new calculations are introduced to the projectiles of every game, and more realistic typically means more difficult. In the shooting games of tomorrow, we're going to have to factor in a lot more as we actually move forward in the game. But at the same time, we'll probably continue to get games that use the older rate casting method, because frankly, sometimes older games are more fun. This is a divergent thing between people in a culture that we like to call taste. Did you learn something today? Also, do you tend to like older shooters or newer shooters? On both points, we'd like to have a discussion in the comments with you. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos just like this one every single day of the week, and the best way to see them first is a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video, and we will see you next time right here on Game Ranks.